Hello, my name is Art. And my name is Amrit. And today we'll be talking about agricultural chemistry. So what is it? Agricultural chemistry is a look into crop and animal production, food safety, nutrition, processing, and packaging. The goal is to produce nutritious food to help the population in a sustainable way while keeping in mind of the environment. Also, they want to increase the fertility of soil, improve agriculture yields, and the quality of crops. So some of the titles given to the people working in the field. So some of the titles include agricultural chemists, animal chemists, soil and plant chemists, flavor chemists, food chemists, and nutritional chemists. So some of the products created in this field. So some of the products include herbicides, which are chemical substances used to control unwanted plants, and these include weeds. Next would be insecticides, so they're chemical substances used to kill insects, like bugs on plants. Another product would be fungicides, so they are chemical substances used to get rid of plant disease, and they are usually sprayed onto the plants. And another product would be fertilizers, and they are chemical or natural substances which are added to soil to increase plant growth. Some major chemicals used include pneumonium nitrate, Acephate, gibberellic acid, and strychnine. These are formulas and these are the form chemical structures. So you may be wondering why are these chemicals used? So ammonium nitrate, it is the key component in fertilizers. It is one of the primary nutrients for plants in order for them to undergo photosynthesis. Plants can't use nitrogen in its molecular form, so it must be in a compound like ammonium nitrate. So acephate is a big ingredient in this exercise. It's used on food crops, sit trees, and golf courses. So more info on acetate. It can kill insects when they touch or eat the chemical. When it's inside the insect's body, the chemical turns into another chemical called methamidophos. Acephate is less toxic to mammals because the chemical doesn't turn into methamidophos in the body. So for acephate, the two chemicals affect the nervous system as it causes overactivity in the nerves, muscles, or brains which kills the insect. So gibberellic acid, so what is gibberellic acid? So it is a growth hormone found in plants. It helps plants grow as it stimulates seed germination, which is the speed at which the plant grows from a seed. It is possible to produce it industrially using microorganisms and give it to plants in order to help them grow faster. So strechin it is a highly toxic chemical used in pesticides to kill birds and rodents. It is colorless and bitter. It is very toxic to humans because if it is inhaled, swallowed or gets in your eyes or mouth, it can be fatal. So you may be wondering, there must be environmental impacts for these chemicals. So for ammonium nitrate, excess nitrogen in fertilizers can lead to ex excessive plant growth. Too much nitrogen can also increase the acidic levels in the soil, which means that plants will not grow as well in that soil. Also, rainwater runoff can carry the excess nitrogen from fertilizers into groundwater or surface water. This causes nitrogen to become a pollutant. It boosts the growth of algae in the water which decreases the level of oxygen for aquatic life which leads to death. In order to reduce the impact on the environment of ammonium nitrate, we should use less fertilizer for our lawns and plants. So acephate it is harmful to mammals as if swallowed or inhaled, it can cause damage to the organs and can possibly cause cancer. To prevent this, everyone should read all labels and use protection when spraying it. After done spraying, you should wash your hands. So for gibberellic acid, if an excessive amount of this hormone is given to a plant, it will end up killing it. To prevent this, give the plant a sustainable amount of the hormone. So stretching. It can also be poisonous to non-targeting animals as it is toxic. It can also be toxic to humans as it can harm us if inhaled or swallowed because it breaks down the nervous system. To prevent this, read all labels and use proper protection when using it. So the level of education required to work in this field. So a four-year undergraduate degree in chemistry, biology, or food science is required. And many people go on to earn a master's degree in food science. A PhD is required for those who want to teach. 
So how's it like to work as an agriculture chemist? Do you work in laboratory or in the fields? They're employed by food processing and ingredient supply companies or government agencies and their average salary is approximately 66000 So why should you want to join this field? It has a pretty good salary of 66000 You can help improve the environment and you feel better about yourself and you help increase the quality and quantity of food for the world. So some of the interesting things in this field and that would be innovation. So scientists are using controlled pollination and genetic engineering to develop new plants that resist disease without the need for chemical additives. Also they are researching the ways to create plants that can grow in soil that lack nutrients and require less water to grow. They have created new types of pesticide, herbicide and fertilizers which are less harmful to the environment. Also, they are looking at new approaches to crop and livestock management that improves soil and animal health. Also, new technologies are being developed that will make farming more productive and cost efficient. And finally, they are researching ways to reduce the effects of climate change. We hope you liked this video and learned something new about agricultural chemistry.